I'm Jeff Whitworth, an extension specialist with the entomology department at Kansas State University. Um, today we're doing some research uh, relative to brown recluse spiders. In the last several years uh, that we've had brown recluse spider problems throughout the state, there's been a real debate, argument, controversy, whatever you want to call it, amongst the uh, pest control operators, the professionals, whether insecticides are actually beneficial to controlling a brown recluse infestation in a home or in a structure, or if just uh, sticky traps are good enough, or do you need a combination thereof. So two years ago we started a study with brown recluse spiders where we selected several houses, several structures, where we actually treated some of them, some of them we didn't treat, um, and some of them we just put sticky traps down. A year ago we started a project looking at various insecticides. In this case, we have two general use insecticides. The reason we've selected general use insecticides is because they are general use. That means the public can buy them for use around their home. And the insecticides that we selected are very common, but the most important thing, they have brown recluse spider on the label. Therefore, it is um, hopefully, it is one that will be controlled or killed by these insecticides. So what we've done, and it, what takes, a, so the reason I said we started three years ago is because it takes a long time to, do, to get enough spiders to do the, the appropriate amount of research. So what we've done is we're looking at two different substrates. One, we're looking at a tile, which is common in basements or in houses, and the other is look in a, at a carpet. So we treat the carpet, we treat the tile, we release brown recluse spiders. In, in the background you can see uh, some of our associates um, actually releasing these spiders. They let them uh, come in contact with this insecticide and hopefully recaptured after it has run across either the tile or the carpet. Um, and then we put them back in an individual container and we monitor them 24 hours to see if the insecticide is going to work then we go back and monitor at 48 hours, then we go back 96 hours to see if there's any residual activity. So we have spiders we're re releasing now, we'll look at them 24 hours, we'll, um, and then we'll have some we go back and look at 48 hours, 96 hours, because that's another one of the controversies amongst the Pest Control Association throughout the state of Kansas. If the spider is sprayed directly with the insecticide, uh, most of our professional insect or professional pest control operators will say it will be killed. But a lot of them don't think that the residual activity, and that's the activity um, due to the insecticide being there after it has dried, is sufficient to control brown recluse spiders. Brown recluse spiders are kind of unique um, because in Kansas we have two what we consider to be highly poisonous spiders, at least to humans. That's the black widow and the brown recluse. The brown recluse is much more the common spider throughout the state. Um, they're probably um, just about every home, every structure throughout the state, um, but you may not know it because as the name implies, it is reclusive, the brown recluse. Um, they are as scared of people as people are of them. Therefore, they remain you know, in dark crevices and in places out of the way where you don't normally see them, where, where most of the time where we come in contact with the brown recluse spider is they're, they're, a, they're a hunter, they're out looking for prey at night for the most part, um, and so they search, they, it starts to get light or some, some home, homeowner turns on the light uh, and they run for cover. That often can be a shoe can often be a pile of clothes left on the floor uh, someplace. And so the next day we pick up that shoe or we pick up that clothing, we put them on. That spider feels threatened because we're pressing that spider between our skin and the clothing. Uh, so its natural reaction is to bite. Uh, and that bite then can be, you know, it can, can be pretty serious depending upon your level of, of um, I, your level of sensitivity to that particular toxin. Uh, now, I said two poisonous spiders in Kansas. Actually, all spiders are poisonous, but those are the only two, the black widow and the brown recluse, 
that really people mostly have to worry about. Uh, the others, either they can't penetrate our skin with their fangs or else the toxin isn't, uh, you know, we're not sensitive to their toxin, whatever. But the black widow is more of a web building spider. So they'll mostly hang out in a web uh, in your garage or some out of the way place. We found, we've gotten a lot of calls about people wanting to move into a vacant building and they found a lot of brown recluse spiders. That's simply because the insects haven't been taken care of. And brown recluse spiders can move, can disperse, can redistribute themselves in many different ways. One of the ways is naturally, where they just crawl in the house because we can find them naturally under rocks, under logs, under bark, in places out in the, in the environment. But they can also be moved in, in boxes and sacks and furniture, or at least their egg cases can. Uh, so sometimes, even though you're doing a good job of controlling your insects and your brown recluse spiders, you may move some eggs into your house unknowingly. Nothing actually kills the eggs. The insecticides that we have um, that may be effective on brown recluse spiders, they're still not effective on the egg cases. They've done several studies. Um, so they may kill the spiders when they first come out of the eggs and start crawling around. But you've got to remember these are contact insecticides. The egg cases are pretty much water resistant or impervious to water. So when you spray an insecticide on the egg case, um, or especially the egg case inside the webbing, that is pretty much water resistant, water repellent, so you're not going to get the insecticide inside. Most of our insecticides will last 14 to 21 days, maybe 28 days, uh, provide residual activity. Uh, so even if there is some residual activity, and that's one of the things we're looking at, we're checking, um, even if there is some residual activity, it may not be as effective on brown recluse spiders as it is on some of the other um, pests that we normally associate with household uh, problems. So that's one of the reasons why we're doing this study. Um, nobody in the country has done much work on brown recluse spiders just because it is really difficult. Number one, it's difficult to get the spiders. Number two, they're hazardous. Not everybody likes to work on them. So uh, we've taken this uh, little project up um, to try and provide some answers to the Kansas Pest Control Association, also the Kansas, um, the, the people that live in Kansas, the citizens of Kansas. So maybe uh, by the end of the summer, we can have some information out as to how to best control brown recluse spiders, whether it's to use sticky traps, uh, combination of insecticide and sticky traps, or just an insecticide application. So that's one of the reasons why we're doing this uh, pretty intensive uh, research project.